hello 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 everybody it is your girl Prussia, and i'm back with another video another video another video another video oh oh another video oh oh another video oh i'm gonna try and come up with different little intros <laughs> but anyway y'all thank y'all for coming to my channel welcome and or welcome back to my channel is this if this is your first time here, welcome. Hi, hello. If you've been back here a couple times, what's happening? Oh, hey, boy, what you doing? Okay. Don't forget to do what? Comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell button so you never miss a video when she do upload. Okay? All right. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get to this video. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. So this is another just my two cents with Prush. That be me. And um, I'm going to give y'all my thoughts, feels, and opinions on some celebrity topics or whatever I saw trending on the internet and decide to give just my two cents. So the first thing I want to talk about the fact that Kenya Barris, the creator of Blackish, is directing a remake of The Wizard of Oz. And the question is, will it have a diverse cast? Um, I feel like Kenya Barris will give us the Cinderella of the Wizard of Oz. <coughs> Where Dorothy gonna be black. Um You know, each probably each one of the ten men or somebody, the Cowardly Lion, the Scarecrow, they all probably gonna be a different color. Um, Glenda the Good Witch. Come so Glenda the Good Witch probably will be somebody like maybe uh what's her name Kristen Chenowitz. Um, the Wicked Witch. I don't know, but I do think they should do like what the Wiz Live did and make the Wizard a woman. Preferably Queen Latifah again. That's just, that's just how I personally feel. Um, I do feel like Dorothy should be a person of color, not necessarily black, but not white. Um, so maybe like Indian or Asian, but not white. <laughs> um, that's how I personally feel. Um, I do feel like each and every, ooh. If they were to do diverse casting of The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy should be black. The Tin Man should probably be black. Um, the Scarecrow can be white. And the Cowardly Lion, he could be a other. Um, the Wizard should be a woman. Um, I think Kristen Chenoweth should be Glenda the Good Witch. Um... As far as the munchkins, I feel like those should be children and not little people. That's just how I feel. But if they want to get little people, that's that's cool too, I guess. Um, they they need jobs too. They got to work too, honey. So, yeah. But that's how I feel. I do feel like the Wizard of Oz should have diverse casting. Um, and maybe, just maybe, somebody could get Tyler Perry to remake The Wiz, honey. So we could... Ease on down, ease on down the road. Mm -mm. Ease on down, ease on down the road. And if we were to remake the Wiz, oh, I'm going to give y'all my dream cast for the Wiz. I just thought about it. Kiki Palmer should play Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Kiki Palmer should play Dorothy because she can sing and dance. Um, As far as the Scarecrow, I feel like they need to go ahead and call Chris Brown. Stop playing with him. Um, the Cowardly Lion should be, oh, who should the Cowardly Lion be? Hmm. Okay, maybe I didn't think that far. They could make Neo the Tin Man again from, um, the Wiz Live. Um... Oh, y'all know who could be the Cowardly Lion? Because I feel like his screams would fit perfect. Anthony Anderson. 
Anthony Anderson will make a perfect Kyle Lewis. He can't really say. But I could see him as a comedy lion. Um, again, the wig should just be a woman, my personal opinion. But if they was to redo it, the wig should be a comedian. And I know, even though I said um, Tyler Perry should do it, they should make Whoopi Goldberg the wigs. They should make Whoopi Goldberg the wigs. They should make... Um, who should play Auntie M? Matter of fact, call my girl... Auntie Stephanie Mills, let her play Auntie M like she did from the Wiz Live. Um, yeah. And there you have it. Ooh, the Wicked Witch could be played by, um, do we want a seasoned actress to play the Wicked Witch? I don't know why, but I feel like somebody who could pull off like evil real good. Lynn Whitfield. Lynn Whitfield could play the Wicked Witch. And we could have um We could play we could have Auntie Patty play Glenda the Good Witch. And um And Amber Riley could play Miss One again. Go Google Amber Riley. YouTube Amber Riley. The Wiz laugh. Her singing. He's the Wiz. Bit. Yes. So yeah. I mean you can't talk about the Wizard of Oz. Without mentioning the Wiz. Okay. Anyway y'all. So. In child. We should have saw this coming news. Y'all remember in. My first and second episode of Just My Two Cents with Pressure, where I mentioned Sheree Whitfield from The Real Housewives of Atlanta dating Martell Holt from uh, Owns Love and Marriage Huntsville. Well, apparently Martell, Martell Holt's baby mama, uh, what's her name? Adrian Curry or something, then released emails between her and Martell. Apparently she was talking cash money shit to him telling him he was stupid um you know basically insinuating that her child was better than his older kids he has with his ex-wife melanie um she called sheree sheree a old bitch um yeah this is hot and it makes sense now where i had saw like a live video on um YouTube are like on live going off on people or whatever the case may be and sister's losing her shit because I feel like in her mind she thought after he was done with Melanie she was gonna be next she had next and she clearly see no baby you don't got next you do not have next you was not a part of the starting lineup you a sub honey you a substitute you gonna always be on the bench then they ain't press. Then they ain't pressed on you. We ain't checking for you. You have nothing to add a value to his life. <laughs> like, I think little mama need to understand that. I think me and her are like the same age. I believe she's 30 and I'm 30. I think Martel's like 40, almost 50. I don't know, child. But she's stupid. And I feel like she needs to understand that he was using you, baby girl, and you hold no monetary, financial, or even influential purpose in his life. Like, Sheree has influence because she's been in the reality television world for years now. She's a superstar in her own right. Like, she's a bigger celebrity than him and Melanie put together together. Because she's been in reality TV longer. So she has the longevity and her name holds a little more weight. Clout. You feel me? Because this relationship with him and Sheree is a PR stunt if I ever seen one. But she mad. Um, she mad. So Martel might go over there and woo woo woo. Watch woo side and maybe give us some fiend. 
so she could chill out. Um, also, they'll text each other. Uh, Martel just say never get that girl his phone number because, you know, he didn't ever probably want Melody to see the number. <laughs> so they just been emailing. Mm-mm-mm, baby girl. You still let him hit that? And you ain't even got a phone number on him? A phone number. A phone number. Poke thing. Poke thing. Poke thing. And that's not what we finna do news. Dorinda Clark Cole said, eh, eh, not too much on Beyonce. Okay? Not too much. Not too much on Beyonce and church, girl. That's not what we finna do. No, thank you. Keep it moving. Boop, 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 boop. And speaking of that, a lot of these Christian, bishop, pastors, deacons are coming out and saying a whole lot, a whole lot about what we shouldn't be doing as Christians and the music we listen to and all of this. And it's just like, y'all do know Kurt Franklin, Mary Mary, Ty Tribute, and all of them been sampling from secular music for years, right? Y'all do know that we learned in the Clark Sisters documentary that You Brought the Sunshine was sampled from a Stevie Wonder song. Was inspired by a Stevie Wonder song, right? It's secular music. Oh, okay. I just, I just, I just wanted to know if y'all knew that. Oh, okay, okay. Because, yeah, don't, don't do that. Um, but like during the, mm-mm, no, not too much on Beyonce. Not too much. Um, in... Can't trust him. Rick Ross fat ass is down there doing his um employees in Mississippi at the Wingstop dirty. Apparently, them people have to buy new equipment when shit don't work. They gotta do that, pay for their own background checks, uniforms. They was uh his restaurants in my uh, Mississippi, not Miami, was filed. I do know that he said he take accountability or responsibility or whatever for what's going on down there in Mississippi, but baby. It couldn't have been me. And plus, I think the people only get paid like seven twenty five an hour. Rick Ross, you making all this money off one stop, and you telling me them people ain't getting paid at least fifteen dollars, twelve twelve seventy five an hour? Mm, I think you need to change that, sir. You need to go ahead and change that. Go ahead and change that. Pay the people they worth. Anyway, in. <sighs> Y'all some stupid motherfucker news. Swiss Beats and Timberland is suing Triller for non-payment over verses. So, I want to make sure I get y'all the, the full story. Before I give y'all my opinion. Because, ah, she got a opinion, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. 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 I was watching the Elvis movie last night, so. <laughs> but yeah, so it says, um, hold on, let me find out which one was, that was Trilla responding. I gotta find out the original one. Is it on here? I don't see it, it seems like they haven't really posted it up again. Okay, here it goes. So, Swiss Beats and Timberlands are reportedly suing Triller for $28 million owed over verses. Via the Shade Room, it says, via TMZ, um, the two, the pair of producers are suing Triller after they allegedly failed to pay the music moguls for their battle show verses. The lawsuit claims the mega producers sold verses to Triller back in January of 2021. They are now claiming that Triller defaulted on that deal after just two payments. Timberland and Swiss settled with the company after initial default payment, but claim Triller hasn't learned their lesson and continues to play the same game. They are going after Triller for $28 million plus interest. And so then Triller came back, child, and said, bitch, we paid y'all. What the fuck is y'all talking about? And I'm going to tell y'all why this shit is funny. But, um. I'm going to tell y'all why it's funny. 
So Trilla apparently responded and said that they've been paid over fifty million in cash, and only ten million is in question. Um, this is via the Jasmine Brand. It says Trilla has responded to the hefty lawsuit against them and said that they have paid Swiss Beats and Timberlands millions of dollars to date. According to reports, mega producers Swiss Beats and Timberland are taking social media platform Trilla to court for twenty-eight million, claiming they are owed the sum amount after the media site brought the duo's global music series versus last year. As previously reported, the record producers made a deal with Trilla in January for the company last year to buy the versus web series. The amount was undisclosed, but sources says it's clear the sum was in the mid eight figures. Reportedly, a lawsuit filed on Tuesday, August 16th, in Los Angeles Superior Court alleges that the TikTok competitor began missing payments in January this year, the suit reads. To date, defendants have failed and refused to make any payments to Swiss Beat and Timberland of the past due sums and owing. According to Tuesday's lawsuit, Triller sent its first two installments in January 2020 and April 2020. January 2021 and April 2021. However, with further cash payments was due, when further cash payments was due in January of this year, the producer said the video sharing platform did not follow through. The suit reportedly said that a new payment plan was reached and Triller made the first payment under the new plan in February. The company was then required to pay another $9 million to each super producer by March 17th, in addition to another $500,000 apiece every month for 10 months. Swiss Beats and Timberland alleged those payments have not been made. A representative for Trilla responded, released a statement and said, this is not a feud over verses, but simply about earned out payments to Swiss and Tim. Swiss and Tim have personally personally been paid by Trilla over 50 million in cash and stock to date. We're gonna get to that part. And they stand to benefit even more over time. In addition, they have annual obligations, which if met and no breach has occurred, in, entitles them to additional payments. So, <coughs> Trilla, y'all better pay the people their money. Um, but Swiss and Tim, what did y'all expect? Y'all sold something y'all built to some white people. And y'all thought that they was just gonna, like, be on time with it? <laughs> okay. Like, I feel like... Triller started being petty. This is my own personal opinion. When, I don't know if y'all remember when they was trying to charge for, I don't forgot what verses that was. I think it was Music Soul Child of them. They was trying to charge for it to be solely on the Triller app. But everybody was like, nah, fuck that. And so, <laughs> I feel like after that whole debacle and Swizz stepped in and kind of like smooth shit over with everybody I felt like Triller started being petty. Again, this is all my own personal opinion, but I also feel like it's some alleged shit. So, alleged, they might have been being petty because of that incident. But I also feel like Swizz and Tim could have just had them invest. And they could have parted up with the Triller app, started a subscription service for each versus, you know, live performance episode where we pay like, two ninety nine three dollars or whatever the case may be to watch it we get exclusive behind the scenes shit for like an additional dollar or something i don't know but like i feel like if y'all was gonna try and charge because i feel like that was the thing like Triller was low-key trying to recoup their money because they had to pay swiss and tim all that fucking money so they were trying to figure out a way how to recoup their money but then they realized oh these niggas ain't finna give us no money they want this to be free free Oh, oh, okay, oh, okay. All right. So, nigga, we gotta get a C off of free you, niggas, not get paid. I feel like that's what it was, in my personal opinion. 
And I'm also say Swiss Tim, so the people get y'all money. Um, maybe shit. They might sell it over and be like, hey, y'all can take shit. And get the fuck on. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Trilla said this ain't no beef over versus just the money. Uh, um, they say they have stock, I guess, in the Triller app or whatever the case may be. So who knows? Who knows? But tr Trilla, y'all better pay them people. They squirrel them. Okay, pay them people they spell it, but I don't feel bad for Swiss and Tim. Oh, anyway, so y'all better stop playing with my nigga news. Um, if you don't know, I love Chris Brown. And before you bitches start, I've been in love with him since I was 13, but as a grown woman, don't play with me. Anyway, so Chris Brown want to know, you know, has he done enough to... To receive a Hollywood star. And this came about when Nipsey Hussle, of course, was gifted a star for his birthday, which was, I think, a couple days ago, whatever. Um, and to me, honestly, you know, Chris Brown has been in the industry for 17 years now. And, you know, I don't know if Chris has done, like, philanthropy work. I know he has. Um, you know, his businesses and things like that, but, and maybe he has given to charities and things like that anonymously, but I feel like until he gives back and to where, you know, it's on a scale where people know about it and they can say, oh yeah, well this foundation, Chris Brown started, you know, something like where, you know, it's like the Chris Brown dance camp or the Paint Academy by Chris Brown or something to that effect, I feel like then he'll get more accolades to where people will feel comfortable enough to award him such honors like that. I'm not saying he isn't worthy of his star, but I feel like he has to put in the philanthropy work as well as his attributes that he has to music and, you know, acting and things of that nature you know outside of his music what else has he done you know and he's a businessman and everything else but has he done philanthropy work for his community and things of that nature I personally don't know that so I feel like a lot of people who do get Hollywood stars majority of the time I heard they pay for that themselves but they're usually like nominated or whatever the case may be and you know it's a plethora of other things I think outside of just their career it's like more things I could be wrong but I do know you know Nipsey Hussle he did a lot for his community outside of his musical career so I feel like that's the reason he honestly got his star you know what I'm saying because he not only you know, was a rapper, but he did a lot for his community in Compton. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like that's why he got his star. So, like, if we're going to basically, like, compare why Nipsey got his and why Chris Brown hasn't got his, I feel like that's the reason. So, they just got to do a little more work and they'll give him a star. Um, and you shouldn't have been talking shit news. Zoe Kravitz says she regrets talking shit on Oscar night about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. And bitch, you should have you should have just mind your business. Girl, shut up. That's that's all you had to do was shut the fuck up. Mind your motherfucking business, bitch. Um, but yeah, now she says she regret talking her shit. And um hopefully she learned from this. So if next time you learn, just shut up. Be quiet, bitch. When nobody talking to you. <sighs> Your daddy fine though. Anyway. Um. In. Black girl magic. Yes. Go ahead sis news. Solange makes history as the first black woman to compose an original ballet score. Um. Shout out to Solange. You know Solange out here be minding her business. You know she move in silence. We don't never for real know what be going on with Solange until, you know, it's announced to us. I mean, I guess that's a nose thing because y'all know Beyonce be so secretive about every fucking thing. But Solange is like extra secretive and I think it's because, you know, no shade. We low-key don't pay Solange that much attention. <laughs> but I see the table is my favorite motherfucking album. Okay. Don't touch my hair. Yes, bitch. Anyway. Congratulations to Shalange. That is a huge 
deal and an honor and girl go here. Yes, queen. Yes. Go ahead, Solange. Um, in I got a question news. Is the ableist outrage secret racism? So y'all do know recently that both Lizzo and Beyonce both were um called out for using the word spaz in songs and they both removed that word from their lyrics of songs. But the reason this question is being asked because the television term real band uh Big Time Rush has a song coming out called Paralyzed. And apparently this is a song that was supposed to have been released, but it got shelved and now they're re-releasing it. Um dear disabled community, are we gonna let them release this song called Paralyzed? Or is this song gonna go back where the fuck it came from on the shelf? Because if this song makes it to mainstream and the actual title of the song doesn't go bye bye and they have to rename that bitch. Ah! I'm going back to my original question. Is ableism now becoming the secret racism? Inquiring minds want to know. So, if this song comes out, you know, I'll be back to spin the block on this topic. But yeah, that's just how I feel, bitch. Because if they don't get checked at the motherfucking dough, Oh, bitch, I'm coming back. I'm coming back to spin a block on that ass. I just poked myself in the face. But anyway. And so y'all thought this was a good idea news? Um, Rap Snacks is being sued by Mattel for using the word Barbie to sell Nicki Minaj's chips without their permission. Um, the word Barbie is trademarked. It's owned by Mattel. And yes, you know, Nicki Minaj has been running around calling herself, you know, Barbie or whatever the case may be. But now, I don't know if Nicki has ever used it in the tents to make money off of. I'm not sure. Don't quote me, child. But now it's being used in the realm to be made money off of. And I don't know if, if Nicki was using it to make money if she got Mattel's permission. I don't believe Rap Snacks got Mattel's permission, which is why they're being sued. Um, I feel like if they were going to call it Bar B Q, I really do think they should have Bar B and Q. Nikki's Bar B Q instead of actually using the word Barbie. You know, they could have had Bar B A R B Barb B Q Bar B Q like so now they're getting sued. I hope they can settle out of court, honey, and go ahead and just use the word Barb. Oh, child. That was not a good idea, y'all. Mm -mm. Um, in... <laughs> Bitch, my inner child is excited news. This coming Tuesday, August 23rd, Cinderella, the one and only Cinderella we acknowledge outside of the cartoon version. Impossible. Things are happening every day. We'll be on ABC, y'all, at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Of course, at 8 o'clock Eastern, they're going to have a reunion with, you know, the cast members, Brandy, Bernadette Peters, Jason Alexander. Um, who else is living from the cast? I believe uh, Pablo, who paid um, the prince. Uh... Whoopi go oh my god that's why Brandy y'all remember I don't know if y'all remember a couple months ago we saw Brandy and Pablo together I think that's what that was they was filming that reunion oh bitch look at it um Whoopi Goldberg gonna be there I think uh what's his name Victor uh Gerber Garber Gerber the king um I is the other stepsister still living because we know um what's her name oh my god the black stepsister I can't think of that lady's name Nisi from Babs, she she passed away um a year or two ago. So of course she won't be there. Whitney won't be there. Um I did see in the previews that um what's his name? Auntie Billy Porter gonna be talking because you know he just played the fairy god person, father, mother 
in the new Cinderella Cinderella remake they did with that Camila Cabello girl. Um, I didn't watch that shit, but <laughs> like I just said, it's only one Cinderella outside of the animated version. Don't get me wrong, I did watch the remake from 2015 with the white girl with the blue dress. Because I wanted to see what that was given. But other than that, it's only one Cinderella I give a fuck about outside of the animated version. And that's one where Brandy is Cinderella. Okay. Other than that, it's fuck every other Cinderella. Um, yeah, I cannot wait. I am excited. I've been singing. Getting my throat prepared. Okay. Are you? How the damn song go? A sweet invention of a lover's dream. Are you really as wonderful as you see? Like, bitch, do not pay me. I fell in love with love one night when the moon was full. Bump, bump. I fell in love with love. Mm -hmm. Bit, listen. <laughs> a lovely night. A lovely night. Bit. Listen. Le le listen. The prince is giving a ball. <laughs> Do not fucking play with me. I am excited. Okay, listen. That movie came out in 1997. I am 30. Bitch, don't play with me. My inner child is excited as fuck. Okay? Because I was not giving Disney Plus my money. I just, I wasn't going to do it. Okay. I just wasn't going to fucking do it. Sorry. Anyway, y'all. So, I'm excited about that. That's like the most exciting thing going on in my life at the moment. Um, I'm excited about <laughs> Cinderella, bitch. Whew. Yes. Um. And, child, did you think that was a good idea, dude? Um, this man from the chain smokers, his name is Drew or something or another. Was out there in Atlanta partying, child, and um, he got a little too fresh. Um, <laughs> Drew Taggart from the train, the chain smokers, recalls um, being punched in the face because he kissed T.I. on the cheek. And you know, he recalled the story, um, I guess on his Instagram or wherever the hell. He posted the video of, you know, they met T.I., they were having a good time, or whatever the case may be, and he was, he said he was feeling the vibe too much, and, you know, he kissed T.I. on the cheek, and T.I., you know, pushed back and punched him in his face, and he was like, oh my God, I'm sorry, you know, he said he take full accountability, T.I. told him, you know, but we cool. Um, Drew, baby, you just need to understand that, um, not all black people are that friendly. <laughs> like, and we damn sure don't play invade our personal space. That's just something we don't do. Like, I don't even fuck with T.I. because he's a misogynistic asshole. But you just can't be invading people's personal space like that. We don't get down like that. Like, we'll get your hug. We'll dap you up. Hey, ah, but bitch, don't, don't get too close. And now you know why. So, yeah, that was not a good idea, Drew. Don't do that no more. Now you know. When you interact with us, give us a hug. Fist bump. High five. Dap. But don't. Don't you do that. Don't don't do that. Um in Okay, sis. Good for you news. Um, Tevin Campbell finally came out and, you know, confirmed that he is indeed gay. Um, and he talked about coming to terms with his sexuality and how, you know, after he, you know, left the music industry, he really had to figure out who he was and I know it's funny for all black people you know I've seen on internet like well we already knew that's fine you knew that he was gay but he was internally fighting about whether or not he was willing to accept who he was and for a lot of straight people they don't understand that when you are a person of color in the community it is hard for you to fully embrace who you are because you've been taught these things that being gay or anything like that is bad. You're going to hell. You're a sinner. 
you know, your family won't love you and all this type of shit. So it's kind of hard to where you want to be your authentic self, but you're not sure if the people who are supposed to love you unconditionally are still going to extend that unconditional love to you when you tell them who you really are. So for me, I say congratulations, Tevin. Welcome to the community, boo. Welcome to the community. Hopefully, like Niecy Nash, somebody could get you a welcome gift. It won't be me. But <laughs> all I'm going to get you is a welcome, boo. Welcome. Okay. Hey, boo. Hey. Hopefully, you'll be down there next year at a pride parade singing, Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to know your name. Okay. Um... So yeah, girl, good for you, Tevin. Um, and <laughs> niggas ain't shit, dude. Tristan third trimester finally paid his third baby mama her child support money, honey. But allegedly, he still ain't seen that baby. <laughs> Tristan said, "Bitch, take this money, leave me alone." Just said, "Bitch, you want this money here, here, ho, here? Leave me the fuck alone, okay?" Y'all bitches gotta stop fucking these niggas. I, like, if y'all, listen, listen, I am, I thank God every day, I pay attention to the motherfucking signs. I saw the signs that opened up my eyes. Bitch, y'all have to pay attention to the signs that these niggas ain't shit but hoes and tricks. If y'all to pay attention to how he treated his first baby mama, Jordan, how he treated his second Baby mama cloak. <laughs> what the fuck makes y'all want to go and do the shit for a third, for a fifth time? What the fuck is wrong with you bitches? Jordan, um, what's that girl named? Craig or whatever her last name is. Should have been the example for you hoes. Do not fuck with Tristan. He gonna cheat on you with multiple bitches. Chloe should have been the double example when he was with this bitch. She was pregnant. That lady moved to Cleveland. He was she no fucking her. Was videos and all type of shit allegedly of him out there in the street doing her dirty. Bitch, Tristan is not the nigga you have kids. Let me tell you something. Tristan is the type of nigga you have a good time with, not a long time with, bitch. You fuck Tristan and go on about your business. You get your money and go. Tristan is a trick, okay? Tristan is the type of nigga you trick off on. I'm the type of bitch. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if I live to California, bitch, I be tricking off on Tristan. You hear me? Tristan will be paying me. I'm like, Tristan, look here. Look, give me my money. I'm going to suck your dick. I'm going to buy my motherfucking bitch. Okay? I got time for the bullshit. I would not. Mm -mm. I mean, Tristan got to get tested first because I don't fucking trust him. He look like a walking STD. <laughs> but, bitch, give me my money and get the fuck on. What is wrong with you, bitches? Who raised you, bitches? Who? Who raised you, hoes? Who? Who raised you hoes? And in my last bit of news, um, so Diddy decided to say R&B is dead, and he asked who killed it. And, um, rappers. Rappers killed R&B when they decided they wanted to sing too. <laughs> rappers killed R&B when they decided they didn't want to pay an R&B artist their feature price to have an R&B artist sing. Rappers killed R&B when they decided they wanted to vocalize or harmonize. Rappers did that. Rappers did that. Rappers did that. But R&B is not fully dead. That bitch was just like in a mini coma. Um, we do have amazing R&B artists out here that a lot of people may not be checking for. We have Vito. We have Anaya Lamise. We have, you know, Summer Walker. We have Ari Lennox. We have Jasmine Sullivan. We have um, Alexis Isley. We have Sir. We have, um, matter of fact, let me go through my phone. And I'll tell you, motherfucking R&B artists, we got. Okay. Uh, we got Amber Riley or Riley, depending on what she want to be called. Um, we have August Alcina. Who else we got? You know, we got Sierra. We got Brandy. Who else we got? 
We got Chloe and Halle. Um, you know, we got Chris Brown. We got Usher. We got John Legend. We got Mooney Love, Money Long. Um, we have artists like Devin, um, Devin Culture. We have, um, Trevor Jackson. He sings. We have, um, Duran Bernard. We have Division. We got Ella May. We got, um, what's her name? Her. We have Ty Dolla Sign. We got, um, who else? We got Fantasia. Um, we got Jacquees, even though y'all don't check for him. We got Jay Nova. Well, she's more on the alternative side. We got Janelle Monae. Um, we got, we got Janae Aiko. Um, we got Kay Michelle. Um, we got Kelly Rowland. You know, we got Keisha Cole still. We got Monica. We got Kiana Lede. We got Lettucey. You know, even though she's like a soul singer. But we got Lettucey. Um, we got Luke James. We got Mario. We got Mary J. Blige. We got Melanie Fiona. We got Miguel. Um, we got Neo. Who else? We got Ro James. Um, we got Seven Streeter. We got SZA. We got Tamar Braxton. We got Tamar. We got Tiana Taylor. We got Tink. We got Tiffany Evans. We got Usher. Like, we got R&B singers. There's probably even more out there who I probably haven't listened to. But it's more R&B singers. Y'all just not checking for them. That's y'all motherfucking problem. And so y'all want to holler about how R&B's dead. But y'all not checking for the R&B artists. Y'all looking for motherfuckers who are mainstream and on the radio. And not actually listening to the people who are down here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. And they're fucking talented as fuck. Fuck, but they're not pushing this mainstream catchy bullshit or these half-ass incomplete songs oh uh eric billinger completely forgot about him we got eric billinger like there are fucking r&b artists out there y'all just not checking for them and so when y'all say stupid shit like r&b is dead no bitch you not checking for where r&b is it ain't dead bitch you just not checking for it so don't ever disrespect R&B. Okay, we still got Tank. Tank just released a new album. I haven't listened to it. Tink, who she released a new album. I haven't listened to it yet. But there are R&B artists out there. Y'all just not checking for them. Y'all need to fucking check for them. I just ran down a complete, utter list of R&B artists that y'all not... Half the time, y'all probably not even checking for these people. Like, once they have a catchy hit bop that plays over and over again on the radio till y'all get tired of it then after that y'all don't check for them when their next song come out case in point after boot up with LMA that girl went silent and I think she just released a project with babyface actually now that I think about it LMA has like a joint collaborate, collaborative project I believe with babyface so are y'all really checking for R&B or are y'all just talking shit Cause it's not dead, but yeah. So, <laughs> cause I don't play about R&B music. I love R&B. Don't play with R&B. Okay. I mean, and for Diddy to say that when I think he is on a song with Bryson Tiller, who's an R&B artist, then he signed an R&B artist or rapper or something to his Love Records or whatever the fuck it's called, like. Diddy, you had the majority of the old school 90s R&B acts on your bad boy label. And you robbed them people blind. Allegedly, but factual. But, so it's like, nigga, don't 
don't don't do that don't don't you fucking dare don't you do that but yeah y'all that's all that's it for my two cents with Presh. don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell button so you never miss a video okay 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 eh, 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 eh. and yes uh chris brown also said something about r&b and everything and he kind of basically said the same shit i said so don't forget to do what? Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell button so you never miss a video. Don't forget to share my videos wherever you see fit. And let everybody in your mama know you fucks with your girl, though. Okay, y'all. That was all. That's it. I love y'all.